Okay, so motion graphics like this can be hard to create sometimes. For people who aren't really used to using tools like After Effects or DaVinci Resolve and Fusion within DaVinci, when you open up those programs, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. Now, I wanna show you a few ways of making some of these really great motion graphics in a few different programs that anyone can use. If you find this video helpful, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe to the channel. It would really help me out. Okay, the first tool that I wanna show you is very, very simple to use. The second one is a little bit more complex and offers a lot more features. So uh, let's just jump right in. You're going to go to jitter.video. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay, so when you come to the site, you're going to see that you have a way to get started. You have drafts and templates to start from. You have your workspace, all files. You can create a new file. You could design in Figma and import everything there. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to start from scratch, but I'm going to show you how to literally make something as super easy as this and it took me no time whatsoever and you can play with it I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file and it is a blank canvas like this there is nothing there okay so basically what they created is a place where you can literally just do what you are here to do they haven't bogged it down with a lot of other tools and features that you don't really need so now I'm gonna create a graphic for my site chief AI officer basically what I'm gonna to need to do is come up here and you see on this shelf you can add text you can add shapes circles or stars you can add any images and you can even add an audio file uh, right here it shows you how to design and animate so now i'm just going to do it very very simply so i'm going to create a text and i'm going to say uh, chief your chief creative officer uh that's simple so here i can do something as simple as right here and i can um lower the size, raise the size, you can create a different font, you can do spacing, um, I'm going to keep it in the center, letter spacing, anything that you could do in most programs, you can do here. Uh, and I am going to add this, I'm going to say simplifying AI for creatives. Uh, but I don't want that to be as big. So I am going to take that and I am going to size that down. Maybe do that right there. Maybe I am going to give it um, a line height difference and separate the lines out a little. Okay, so again, pretty simple. I'm not doing anything spectacular. I am just literally eyeing it. What's really cool about this is there are so many templates you can use. So now I'm going to just come over here to animate and then I'm going to create a new animation. Now there's a ton of different animations to choose from. You can choose different slide ins, different scales. I could try them out. Uh, I could do it by words. I could do it by lines. I can do it by letters. I think the letters is a bit too much, so I'm just going to do it by words. But I don't really like that one, so I'm going to change. Um, Let's see. I kind of like that one. I like it coming from the bottom. Let's see it again. Okay, maybe I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. I'm gonna delay it. There we go. I'm gonna slow down. Um, I can smooth it out if I want. I can uh, keep it more natural. I can accelerate to the end. So you see how it starts at the beginning a little slower and then accelerates. I can do none and it just comes all up at once. Um, I don't like that. I Let's see this again. I kind of like it slowing down at the end. Uh, just finishing very nice and smooth. Okay, perfect. Um, you know what? I'm gonna take it down a little bit more. Perfect. I like that. Okay, so now I have my one file. So, and this is the timeline down at the bottom that's going to show all of the animations. So now I'm going to take an image in. Okay, so I'm going to just come to my desktop. I'm just drag an image in here real quick. So now I have my image. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Now, if you're going to look when I drag the image in, it came on top of the text. So here are your layers. I'm just going to drag it down. So now you can see it. Uh, perfect. So now uh, what you're going to notice is I can hardly read it because of the image there. So I'm going to take a shape right here. I am going to make this shape as wide as the letters. 
Now, I am going to want this to be a little bit um, see-through and transparent so I can see. So there we go, but now it's behind. So I'm gonna put this rectangle in between my image and my text. Uh, there we go, just even that out a little bit. Great, so now I'm gonna select my rectangle, go back to the opacity. Maybe that looks nice. Okay, so now I can animate each one of these images separately. This is the great part of motion design. Okay, so now this is my rectangle. This is my text. I can come up here and select both of this as well. Uh, now I wanna just animate my rectangle to come on. So I'm gonna just do the same exact thing. I'm gonna animate, new animate. I kinda want it to come from left to right. So let's see what I've got here. Uh, I like, I like that, but I want it to come from the bottom left instead of the top right. So I'm just gonna say bottom left. That's where the anchor is. Okay, and then uh, one second, great. But I want that to happen at the same time. So now you see what I'm doing? I'm taking the uh, rectangle and I'm dragging it to the beginning of the animation. So now this happens at the same time. But now I want the rectangle to start a little bit earlier. This is a simple, it's very similar to After Effects, but for somebody who hasn't used it before, it might uh, be a little easier to understand. So maybe I'm gonna do that. Okay, perfect. Cause I wanted it uh, to grow by the time I was bringing on the text. And then I want it to stop and I want this to finish editing on. So that, that's why the length is gonna be like that. I might uh, bring make this a little bit shorter. Let's see what this is like. Great, but now I also want my background image. So I'm gonna come to the background image. I'm just gonna add a new animation. Um, I think maybe shrink in. Let's try that. I'm gonna want that to be at the same time as well. Maybe a little after, uh, let's do the same time as the rectangle. Let's see what this is. I like that. So there we go. Boom. Maybe I want this to be a little bit slower. So let's make this a little longer. So it kind of lands just before as that text is completing. So perfect. Now, I like all these shapes that are there. So I'm just gonna add a shape, and this is just to also show you how uh, the shapes work. So I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll bring it right up here. I'm gonna come to design. Maybe I'm gonna change it to a yellowish. I feel like it needs to pop a little bit more. Uh, great. So I like the yellow. I'm gonna add a circle also. I just clicked on it, that simple. I'm gonna maybe bring this off uh, down here a little bit. And then I'm gonna change the color to that because the gray is a little ugly. Uh, just make that red for now. Um, now I just wanna animate each of these. I'm gonna animate that, uh, the square to, to turn in. Um, I also want that to happen right about here. Let's see. Let's do it a little bit sooner. And maybe let's go ahead and rotate that a little. I want it to end like that. Let's try that. I like that. And then I'm gonna animate this one, the circle. And let's do a twist in. Bam. Let's do this right here. Same time. Perfect. So that is as easy as you can get. I didn't really do keyframing that much. I had the ability to change all the little intricacies and all the pieces, uh, but it's pretty simple to just animate each piece, go inside each one of these, similar to Photoshop. This is very similar to the layers in After Effects, but, but it just seems so much more intuitive. When I look at After Effects, there's just so much you can do, so many effects, so many transitions. I just wanna be able to animate little pieces here and there and then just get it out. So uh, this is uh, really, really great uh, for anybody who just needs a simple animation. So right here, I'm just gonna change the duration to that. Bam, and then bam. 
I'm gonna export, and then uh, for paying customers, you can get a 1080p or a 4K. You could do videos, you could do GIFs, you could do anything you want, but it's just really easy to then export and share it with whomever you want. So that's Jitter. Now I'm gonna pop in here. Um, this one is a little bit more complex. It's called Fable Prism, and it's create.fable.app. And uh, this is feeling very similar to a lot of the applications that are coming out, like Runway and all these different, just the look of it, the look and the feel of it. Basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come into their AI starter program just to show you a little bit about what this is. So on the left-hand side is the design. Again, you can design in Figma, you can design in layers, and then the right is what it's gonna look like. So there's different types of canvases, right? On the bottom are your layers, similar to all of the other programs, similar to to jitter but the cool thing about this is it gets very much more into what after effects is doing where you can uh pipe down into the layers right and there's your rotation there's your uh different uh effects that you want so i'm gonna uh reduce all of these come back in now what's cool about this is you can get very granular here so all of these are grouped right so this is a block and then this is the light purple square too, the yellow square, the light purple square. You can come in here and just have animations to each particular thing. I'm gonna pick this square right here. So that is the light purple square one because it highlights. Now imagine if I got rid of this rotation right here, I'm just gonna delete that and I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna go to transition and effects. You'll see right now, just to show you, it doesn't turn. Now the other ones are turning. So I literally just click on that. I go to transition and effects and I can go into shapes. And it takes me, uh, so I go down here uh, to shape animation. So transforms, right? I can do the, ro the rotation or the oscillation. Uh, I can do the wiggle position. You literally have all of these different, uh, all these different effects that you can use. So if I just literally click that, you'll see right here, now it added it. So now it's oscillating like I wanted it to do. Now, the cool thing about this too, so this is showing the render. So now I'm gonna click off the canvas and this is a really cool tool that you can use. So now if I could do lenses, right now it's using a watercolor lens uh, and then you're gonna be able to see it right over here. I'm gonna change it to, there's clear, you can do anime. So now imagine I picked anime. Uh, right here, you see what I've done and now it's gonna render this as an anime version of that just as a lens. And I'm giving a lot open to creativity here. So now it puts anime images into all of these blocks. That looks nothing like what I designed. So I'm gonna take it back on the creativity. I don't wanna give it a lot to work with. I'm gonna take it to 2%. I don't know why I would choose anime for this, to tell you the truth. Let's like try something that I might actually use, like oil painting. That's really cool. So if I chose oil painting, now if you pump the creativity up, you'll see that it actually gives you the oil painting. It gives you a little bit of a different image. And that's really neat. So now I can try over here, I could say, what if I did like paper? Now it's the idea of this design is paper. So that's really cool. Then you can export it later. You can change the canvas color. You can even direct the prism and then use AI for this and influence edges. And there's a lot more details here. It's as easy as sampling it on the left side, figuring out what the style is on the right side. And then you could use different types of presets for animations. All of this is similar to what is in After Effects, but it can be really helpful to you if you want to do it and you've never used it before, this might be a little bit more intuitive than After Effects, which is more of a learned skill. And you're able to control every single aspect, every single layer. You can animate it how you want and use all the presets. It's super helpful. It's really intuitive. And it really helps people who haven't done motion graphics or motion design being able to do something. You can go and look at examples and also really advanced motion designers can use this. And I've seen some incredible work. Uh, look at, get in inspired and try and figure out something that you like, then go design it and then put it in here, separate it all out, just try a few things, try it in Jitter or Fable Prism, and hopefully you'll be able to just get started and do some things that you haven't been able to do before. Leave a comment below if you'd like me to do anything else with either of these programs, but uh, hopefully you can use this to 
get some whether it's for your business, whether you're a creator, and you can just do something that's a little bit more advanced than what you've been doing or needing somebody else to do for you. So until next time, uh, subscribe to the channel, check out my newsletter if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video.